Hey everybody, it's Seth and Paul, Very Money Channel. Welcome in. Today we are analyzing Workhorse Group. This is a company out of Cincinnati, Ohio. I love Ohio. They're doing the uh, the utility vehicles, electro electric cars, right? Paul, they're doing electric. Oh, I have no idea. Oh. Why do you say that? I'm kidding. Here's the point, folks. We don't actually care what they do. I know it's weird to think about this. We are trying to find undervalued companies so we can buy low and, and watch them rise and sell high as opposed to a lot of our peers out there who are just telling you buy all the overvalued companies. So we're going to look at Workhorse today, Workhorse Group, and we're going to analyze it using our eight pillar analysis. I made sure I was making sure I got my eight. I was, I was about ready to go. That was close. I was, I was, I was, <laughs> I was going to do like a, one of these. It's eight pillar analysis. We're going to look at the financial health of this company. Paul's going to walk you through it right now. So when you're investing, you know if you're investing in a stable, growing company, it's going to make you cash uh, in the future, or you're just investing in some hype, which very well might be the case with Workhorse Group. I introduce my dear friend and colleague, Paul Gabriel. How are can you, my a, friend? Can I make a comment? You always say that. Please we do. We do care about what the company does. That's true. But not right now. What we're trying, we get a lot of comments about this in our videos. Do more due diligence. That's not the point of the eight pillars. That's right. The point of the eight pillars is to one, Determine if you want to go further. And then two, if you decide to go further into your investigation and analysis, then from there, it tells you what questions to start asking. So for all you haters out there who are going to write a comment saying, do your due diligence, I, that's not my goal right now. That's why I also tell people you're not going to buy or sell based on the eight pillars. It's about telling you the 500 foot view of the company and tell you what, what the story could be and then go investigate further by reading the 10K, reading articles, see what other people have written about the company. Let's get into it, Paul. What is the market cap for Workhorse Group? Uh, pretty much exactly $3 billion right now. So it's a $3 billion company. Our first pillar is PE ratio. We want this less than 20, Paul. What is it? Uh, it is definitely less than 20 because it doesn't exist. Oh, boy. X right there. Okay, no PE. That's a great start. How about profit margin, Paul? I think this is the highest I've ever seen. A negative 15,000% profit margin. That is wonderful. Guys, can I show something real quick? Go ahead. I don't, I don't know if it's going to end up being like one of the other companies we did. Their revenue in the last 12 months, according to Y charts. Go on. And I'm going to do more research to see what the What's actual revenue on? is. Sure. Was $750,000 in the last... 12 months. Now, Paul, you make that a month. <laughs> <laughs> our revenue at our company is about $20 million a year. And so you're probably- They did 750,000 last year. So okay. according to the same thing, the same multiples, I sh my company should be worth about $75 billion according to this, okay? Great. We're off to a great start. So guys, so far, major red flags. No PE, huge profit margin loss, and a $750,000 revenue in the last- 12 months. Oh, but good job though. They, they lost 210 million. My company did not lose 210 million. But Paul, this is a growth company. I know it's You're a growth missing company. Out. And guess what guys? For those who are gonna tell me I don't get growth, growth is an aspect of value investing. You still incorporate growth into what your analysis is gonna be. The argument I make is most people overpay for growth, which seems to might be the case here. When you have a company that did $740,000 in revenue, could it end up being fine? Sure, but for every company doing 740,000 in revenue that'd be worth $3 billion, you'll probably end up losing a lot of money. Let's pull up the uh, pillar number three, which is revenue growth. While Paul does that, make sure you guys smash that, tickle that thumbs up for us. As I always say, Paul loves to be tickled on his feet, on his little, uh, under, his, under his arms. He's like we a We were doing baby. that a lot in Mexico last week. You were tickling that me. That was beautiful. So yes, tickle the thumbs up and tickle Paul's um, belly. Um, both result in uh, happy feelings for us. So okay. Paul, revenue growth over the past five this years. This company's been around for a long time. Uh-oh. According to this, Y charts, we have financials going back to 2010. So in 2010, they did 140,000 in revenue, 190,000, 270,000, 177,000, 177,000, 140,000, 6.4 million, 10 million. Wait a minute now. 500,000, 240,000. So what happened here? In a technicality, this is a check. Because five years ago, they did 140000 in revenue, and this year, they did 240000 in revenue. Now, I, so not, in the I, most obscure check of all time. I'm not seeing 2020 on there, Paul. Am I wrong? No, because 2020 hasn't finished yet. Can Sorry, 2020 hasn't been reported yet. It is finished, but it still takes them about a month to report the numbers. Can we look at quarter to quarter then, perhaps? Yes, we can. Let's look at quarter to quarter. That's, I'm a great, that's... Qu that's a great idea, since this is a cluster F. Yes. Um, Quarterly numbers. This is where people get after us, because we don't... We, we're not looking at quarterly, Paul, but oh, great. it's so, not much better. In the last quarter of 2019. Is that 30 grand? No, 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 no. That's not 30 grand. That's $3,000. Great. Is that correct? Yeah. So this would be 100. 
This would be ten. Three, no, three hundred dollars. I'm sorry, three hundred dollars. Dollars in revenue. Okay. <laughs> but that's their operating revenue. Total revenue was twenty six hundred dollars. So that's pretty good. Um, and then last quarter, though, they did do half a million dollars in revenue. Wow. Half a million. Half a million in one quarter. Yeah. This company's gonna be a trillion dollar company in four days. This is a buy. This is a buy, Paul. <laughs> this is a buy. Just stop the show, everyone out there. This is fantastic, Paul. But you know look what they this. are really good at? Go ahead. Losing money. Why, so let's look at their net income. Okay, this is pro this is profit growth. Uh, profit growth. Okay. They lost nine and a half million, then they lost thirty-seven million. That's an X, guys. Uh, we don't want profit getting worse. So in the last ten years, look how much money they've lost. Five, eight point seven four. Who is the moron who's funding this company? <laughs> By the way, I'm being funny about it. It's just. It's Th silly to me. This has this has to be one of absolutely the most laughable uh, financial analysis of any. One thousand percent. Let's do shares outstanding, which is pillar number five, Paul. The story gets better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Seventeen million shares outstanding to sixty-four million shares outstanding. <laughs> the good news for all you people who own shares. Now your losses are being spread amongst a lot more. That's an X, Paul, not a check. You're going. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's an, an X. That's You're an X. right. That's an X. Okay, so they are increasing shares by. <laughs> Three or four times. Almost, almost four times. Almost three four and a half times. times. So if you bought a share five years ago, it's now worth a quarter of that. Essentially. Or you're at least the, the 30%, yeah. uh, 70 percent less. Um that's pretty sweet. Should we keep going with the pillars? Or? I would love to. This is gonna be an exciting. I want to spend a good 10 minutes on this company. Uh, talk about uh, it. Current assets greater than current liabilities. Again, Paul, just, just let you know, Paul, the comments are gonna be you're wrong, and this is an amazing growth company, and you're missing out, Paul. And why so is anybody who says that right now? Why not pay $30 billion for it? Why not $300 billion? Why not $3 trillion? To which you'll sit there and say, well, that's ridiculous. If it was at $300 million, I would say, why not $3 billion? And you would have said, that's ridiculous. Now that it's $3 billion, you justify in your head all the time how it can keep going. I don't care what the number, I don't care what you say about the growth. A growth company is still, and we'll do this analysis right now, growing companies still have a price to pay for them. You can't just pay whatever for growth. Can we all agree that a company growing, two exact companies, exactly the same financials, one growing 100% a year and one growing 200% a year, have a very different price? Yeah. But according to what you guys are saying, as long as it has a lot of growth, then my comment is, okay, what's enough growth? What's not growing? What's not too much growth? What's not enough growth? They, all these questions happen. I prefer just look at it and say, hey, a company's value is the present present value of the future cash flow. The faster the growth, the higher the future cash flow, therefore the higher value today. It doesn't mean that when you start sitting there seeing a company has half a million dollars in revenue in one quarter, guys, I do half a million dollars in revenue in freaking a week and a half at my company. Yeah. And I'm not, I know my company would probably wouldn't even sell for 1%, 1% of that number. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I look at it going, what the heck's going on? So anyways. A pillar number six is current assets greater than current liabilities. They have about $100 million in cash. Okay. Current liabilities, $132 million. They're underwater as well? Underwater. That's a check. That's an X again. Why do I keep saying check? How about free cash flow, Paul? This is cash from okay. operations minus capital expenditures. Uh, it's an X because they did eight point, they lost $8.2 in free cash flow five years ago. Now they lost $39 million. So X there. And we have no multiple because it's always a negative X and X. So pillar number eight is there's real no price to free cash There flow. is no price to free cash flow because there is no free cash so flow. So let's step back, Paul. Obviously, you're. this is horrific, guys. This is workhorse. Their PE is awful. Their profit margin is awful. Their revenue is technically up. <laughs> uh, profit, <laughs> profit is down. Shares are exponentially up. Uh, assets, they're underwater. They have no free cash flow, Paul. What are your thoughts on this ridiculous company? Avoid. Now I'm going to go explain the whole idea of growth companies. Please do. Let's say you have two companies, company A and company B. They both did a, a dollar in profit, dollar in cash flow to your pocket every year. We're going to make this as simple as possible. Now let's say for the next five years, this company did one dollar a year. This one did two dollars and three dollars and four and five. Which one's worth more money today? Today? Today. Obviously, company B. Obviously, because you have a future stream of cash flows. You're going to make $15 over five years as opposed to $5 over five years. You should be willing to pay a lot more. I'm not going to get into how much you want to pay, but I'm just talking high level from a standpoint of how you should look at these. Great. We all agree here, right? Great. Okay. Now, let's say these two companies, again, they're exactly the same company. They're the exact same industry, just to make it simple. 
Now let's say this company is going to do this now. Great, right? Awesome. Now company B is doing this growth. This is still a lot of growth, guys. This company is going to go up five times in profit in five years. But this company is now going nine times. The problem you're seeing is people never compare. They just look at this and say, oh my God, this company's going up five times. I'm going to pay whatever it takes. It has a great growth story. To which I sit there and say, well, then what about this company? This company is growing nine times. Shouldn't you pay more for this one? But the second you start paying too much for every individual company because they have massive growth potential, you're not keeping in consideration that two different two companies that have different growth rates, you're putting massive values on both of them. Now, from here, from this standpoint, it's pretty clear you should pay more for company B as well because the growth is much bigger than company A. So there's still growth is still a factor in value. Does that make sense, Seth? Yeah, yeah. And people always forget that. They sit there and say growth versus value. No, growth is a factor. How much am I willing to pay to get $16, $21, $25 in cash over five years versus how much do I want to pay to get $15 in cash? That's for your determination to decide what is $25 in cash worth to me today. Is it worth 10? I would say so. I'm going to take 10 and make it 25 over the next five years. Sure. Is it worth 30? Absolutely. Why would I pay 30 today to get 25? Is it worth 300? That's what you're doing when you only look at growth as, a, as hey, growth is going to happen. Let me go pay. That is what you're doing wrong here. Now, the other example I'm going to give, and this is the one I really like talking about the most. This is the one that's really going to hopefully harp it home to you. Now, remember, I'm assuming that this company ceases to, has no debt. At the end of five years, they're going to liquidate the company, they're going to get rid of it, and they're going to give you your cash, that, your portion of it. These two companies, which one should be worth more today? B. No. B. We already agreed on that one in the first example. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I'm going to pay a dollar for this one and $30 for this one, which one would you rather have? Oh, I see. Yeah, A. A. A is not even growing. B is growing, but why would you pay $30 to get 15? You're going to lose money for the next five years. Because the end of five years, you're going to get how? You're going to get your share. You're going to get your money. They're going to give you $15. You're going to wait, I paid 30. Yeah, you paid too much. But here, you're paying a dollar to get $5 over the next five years. That's what matters here, people. It doesn't matter what the growth rate is. It's what you're paying for the growth rate. There's no growth here. Want me to go to extreme? Let me go to extreme. This is still a better investment. They get $2 for the next two years and then go to zero. This company's around for five years making 15 bucks. You overpaid for it. That is the point with growth and value. Value is what you pay. Value, price is what you pay, value is what you get. I paid a dollar and got two over the next two years. That's doubling my money over the next two years. No growth, and in fact, it went to zero. The company didn't make any more money. Here, I paid $30. Why? The growth story is incredible. Look, Paul, they're growing. You don't get it. They're growing. Great. Go pay through the nose for it. You do this 100 times, you're going to end up very, very broke. That is the point of value investing. It still factors in growth. You have to remember that as you go along, that you're still paying a price today for those growth assumptions. But what you're actually doing is you look at the stock price as the growth potential. You're not looking at the business. You have to remember that a stock is just a business. You're buying a piece of a business. You're buying a piece of cash flow for the next whatever number of years. I'm making this simple, but this analogy is exactly what plays out in how people look at stocks. If you look at this and say, this guy is off his gourd, he's an idiot, then fine, I, I get that. But if you sit there and go, oh crap, I didn't think about that. We did that video about Tesla and how you could buy all these five huge companies yeah. for the price of Tesla. And that really hit with a lot of people. Yeah. I'm hoping this hits as well. I would never pay $5 for this company. They're both a bad value. Both bad. Why? Because why would I pay $5 to get two? That's the point of value investing. If you believe that this is a good investment, please call me. I will sell you shares of my company tomorrow. I will give you my cell phone number. You call me. I will sell you shares based on these assumptions. Gladly will sell you shares of my company. Because you clearly, because my company is growing really fast. Everything money is growing fast, right? 
I do like those comments, by the way, when people say, oh, everything money is like a growth company. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, a friend of ours, I'm look, I looked up on YouTube, uh, not, not, not really a friend of ours, but has done seven videos on this, Paul, with um, seven videos entitled Workhorse with huge potential, massive stock price, um, uh, huge gains, uh, seven videos on this company just to, to clickbait you and to get you to somehow believe uh, that, um, that 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 they're giving you sound advice when Paul. I don't think we'll, we'll look at this company for a while. It's complete dog. Um, yeah, I mean, to poop. me, there's way too many other possible better companies to look at that have stable cash flow, growing cash flow. Why even waste your time? Why? Because a stock goes up fast, and the ones that go up fast fall fast. Look at Bitcoin. It went from forty-two thousand dollars one day to thirty-one thousand. Now it's back at the thirty-four-five. You can't tell me that's stable. Right. Yep. And if you want to do that, have fun. More power to you. It's just not for me. Thanks for watching the show, everybody. Make sure you subscribe. If you're interested in this, you can join our Patreon page. Paul, we have over 200, almost 300 patrons now. You can have direct access to someone like this that looks at the damn numbers of these companies and not the hype. We follow the math. What not else do the they hype. get with the Patreon? Because well, it's gosh, really they get everything. Yeah. So you're going to get the eight pillar uh, website. website. And app when it comes out. And app that where you can screen uh, these stocks and companies yourself to see the financial health. And um, you'll join our community where you have access to Paul, myself, Patreon-only videos. And we're giving away two Teslas this year. And we're giving away two Teslas just to our patrons. All this and Only more. the patrons get that. Click the uh, click, Look in the description below did and Nate sign up for that? Patreon. I don't know, Nate. Yeah, he did know about that. Um, all right, guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for liking us. Uh, smash that thumb, th thumbs up. Subscribe. I love you. I love all you. All the OG that have been with us all these years. We love, love you guys. All y'all. See you guys. Bye.